Hey YouTube friends, um, trying out a new camera here, uh, which is going a bit slow, but uh, there you go, still uh, worth a try. Um, okay, I'm responding to um, a video I've just watched about sin, about consequences, and it goes pretty much on the lines of... Um, uh, well, basically about God being mocked, how mankind boasts, we as human beings boast about um, our achievements, and then God comes along and says, oh, you're not really as big as uh, you claim to be. So, uh, it got me thinking about some things, actually. You know, remember the parable that Jesus told about the man who owned many fields and he planted uh, lots of grain and grew lots of wine, uh, grapes and stuff, made lots of wine and made lots of, grew lots of food and uh, then said to himself, I shall store it up and I shall be uh, secure in my wealth and Jesus says basically, you foolish man, for tonight God will demand your very life from you and strangers will eat your goods um, well, some of the stories that were on this video, I mean, I'm not saying I agree with them or anything like that, but uh, it just reminded me of um, a dear friend of mine from uh, Hanny in Oxfordshire uh, by the name of Ken Stallard. Uh, his little church, which he um, pastored at uh, Frilford um, in Oxfordshire, uh, was falling into disuse and um, the congregation of churches of little ch village chapels uh, um, all the congregations got together and they said you know we want to buy this chapel and start using it again as a place to preach the gospel and there was a little cottage just outside this chapel in Frilford and the people who lived in there were not happy with the fact that this church was going to be used again, this little chapel was going to be used again for a place of worship and uh, the, the owner of the, ch of the um, cottage started a little campaign um, right into the council saying do not let this be sold as a place of worship indeed uh, let be sold to a developer to come and bulldoze it down and uh, let them build houses on it and um, while this was going on uh, Ken uh, would often visit this, visit this little chapel to pray in it and uh, one day this man came up to him out of his garden and said you know I'm going to do everything I can, everything I can, to stop this chapel from being used as a chapel. They're going to build cottages on this land, they're going to build at least two houses on this land, whether you like it or not. And Ken spoke, what he said himself was almost terrifying lines he has ever spoken. He says, what man proposes, God disposes. I understand it was on a midweek day. On Sunday, uh, the man who owned the cottage was cut in the grass. And he had a heart attack and died in his back garden. Ken also went on to say that uh, he was um, invited to a prison one day and he met um, he met one of the notorious Craterins at this prison. They were like a 1960s, 1950s, 1960s gangsters in London uh, responsible for a couple of murders and uh, basically ran a gang, criminal syndicate. 
and uh, I think it was uh, was it Reggie or Ronnie, the um, the youngest, the homosexual, and the most violent of the brothers. And um, uh, he had um, time to talk with uh, with Ken, and they became friends. And Ken would often uh, contact uh, the former criminal boss in his prison. After he died, and um, uh, and Violet Cray, the mother, died. Uh, I think it was uh, Reggie. I think was the younger, so the older of the two. Um, he actually uh, began writing to Ken, and. Um, in, in gratitude, basically, for the for the input, the positive input he had in his brother's life, and uh, Ken uh, became very close to him, and he said there, there was actually a, a popular movement in the United Kingdom. Um, I'm not sure it was really, very good actually, but these guys have been in prison for a long time, and they were more notorious murderers, as far as their crimes go. Um, being released and being downgraded as, as to their threat to society and um, being moved to a, a less secure, oh, well, not secure, not so high secure prisons, etc. And um, he uh, wrote to um, Liam Britton, who was the Home Secretary at the time, and Ken said, uh, um, Will you consider removing Reggie Cray from a category A to a category B prison? And um, there was no response. So one day he actually went to see Liam Britton. And Liam Britton, uh, at this very brief meeting, simply said, Never, 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 never will I allow Reggie Cray to become a Category B prisoner while I am Home Secretary. Three days later, there was a national scandal, and Liam Britton was no longer um, Home Secretary. And uh, I guess, really, you know, it is very true that there are times that God has to step in, and, he's, and He will not allow any mortal man to fulfill their purposes over His. And uh, sometimes sin indeed does have consequences. Um, I just want to share what um, those things that Ken told me.